Hello and welcome to the Division of Education, Innovation and Energy's e-learning program. I am Mrs. Janelle Dillon Shepard and I'll be your tutor for Principles of Business. Today we would look at the nature of business in which we would explore the topic bartering versus money. I do hope you enjoy your class with me today. At the end of the class, as students, I expect you to be able to explain the development of the bartering system, discuss the problems of bartering, and as well to be able to describe the role of money in today's economy. We are now going straight into a video which should depict the bartering system. When we lived in caves, there were no shopping malls, and people's manners were Neanderthal. No bodegas, no delis, no corner stores. Shopping trips turned into tugs of war. When not having pull, got this man mangled. He thought he'd try an easier angle. I'll give you this for that, that for this. We'll make a trade called barter. I'll give you this for that, that for this. We'll have it made with barter. Now barter worked well, at least in theory, but a wallet full of yaks could make you weary. Making change for a cow wasn't easy to master unless you were ready for an utter disaster. Shiny shells were far more portable. Why not use them for what's affordable? I'll give you this for that, that for this. With shiny shells, why barter? I'll give you this for that, that for this. Shelling out shells is smarter. For farmers in ancient Mesopotamia, the barley they grew was the money mania. When hauling big sacks put their backs in traction, they invented coins to lighten transactions. Now when a man had a debt to settle, he'd dig out some coins made of precious metal. I'll give you this for that, that for this, silver or gold or copper. I'll give you this for that, that for this, with coins you're a smarter shopper. Then China made money even more desirous, printing it on paper made of crushed papyrus. Take one from column A and one from column B, the Chinese paid their checks in paper currency. When Columbus set out on that famous charter, he had no paper money so he had to barter. He took along some beads for currency, so barter played a part in our discovery. Balboa and Pizarro and Sebastian Cabot, even Coronado had the trading habit. I'll give you this for that, that for this, they loaded up with gold and parted. I'll give you this for that, that for this, and soon the whole world was charted. Today we use cash and spend with ardor, but that doesn't mean we don't still barter. When a football team needs an all-pro guard, or a kid like you is into trading cards. Take this for that, that for this, bills and coins are smarter. But when you pay for that, remember this, it all started out with barter. So from this video, you would have depicted three things. Number one, you should have already in your mind come up with a definition for the term barter. Two, we should be looking at the timeline that basically spoke to the video or was seen in the video and what they actually used for barter back then. So we, we are talking about copper, silver, shells, metal, precious metal, and uh, cows and cattle. Okay, so we are going to look at what is barter. So in the video, we heard this for that. So let's put that into perspective. So barter is said to be the exchange of goods and services without the use of money. And we have three important elements coming out there. Exchange, another term for exchange could be swap or trade. And then we have goods, which is something tangible you can feel or touch, or services, which is something intangible that you cannot feel or touch. So it's the exchange of goods and services without the use of money. This for that. All right? So once we understood what the video was about and we understand the concept, 
or the definition of bartering, we can now get into our first activity. We are heading straight to Facebook and we are now looking at one of the pages called the Meeting Place. I am sure all of us would have interacted with the Meeting Place and this is where persons on Facebook can come and interact with each other and barter goods and services even in 2020. So barterer number one wants corn, has, sorry, has corn but wants carrot and that person is willing to trade three ears of corn for five carrots. Batterer number two has potatoes and wants silver, but is willing to give away the potatoes if they cannot acquire silver. Batterer number three has beans, wants potatoes. They have extra land, but the land cannot produce potatoes. And batterer number four has carrots and wants corn, but is only willing to trade three carrots for three corn However, they would consider that they do have land that they can plant more carrots. So let's take 60 seconds to see who can barter and what are the issues that may come up within this activity. Okay, so let's look at this activity. Batterer number one and batterer number four seems to have something in common. So we could foresee batterer number one and four doing an exchange even though batterer number four said he would only trade three carrots, he can always grow more, all right? So trade does happen within this element. However, batterer number two, nobody has silver. So he's not able to obtain what he wants. No one has silver, he's unable to obtain what he wants. However, since potato is something that is perishable, he is willing to give batterer number three the potatoes. Batterer number three gets the potatoes, however, nobody wants beans. Okay, so we have some pros and cons coming out from the activity. So as you can see, battering has some problems. So let's get directly into the problems of battering. So coming out of the activity, we are now looking at the problems of bartering. And problem number one speaks to double coincidence of ones. And double coincidence of ones mean that each person must have what the other person wants. According to the video, this for that. So let's look at the example from the activity number one. Batterer number two has potatoes but wants silver. No one in the activity had silver. Batterer number three has beans and wanted potatoes. So therefore, battering could not take place because they did not have what each other wanted. So that's the problem number one. Problem number two, indivisibility of goods. Indivisibility of goods speaks to goods that cannot be broken down into smaller units or smaller parts. So we have an example where we have these guys going into a, a, a barn to get some drinks or, or so on, and the payment was too large. The payment was too large because the shop owner wanted a leg from the cow, and a cow could not be broken down in those days into smaller pieces, and the other pieces kept to barter with other persons. As you can see in the picture, these guys have their pig heads or their tiger heads waiting to pay because they know what their payments are. All right? There was no refrigerators back then to store any part of this cow, whatever was left over. Problem number three. Difficulty to store wealth, which simply means that some products are perishable meaning that they can spoil very quickly. Going back to activity number one, batterer number two wanted, had potatoes but wanted silver. He, did, he was unable to obtain silver, however, he still traded potatoes because he cannot keep them for a long period of time. Problem number four, the rate of exchange. Each person enter into the barter or, or swap 
must come up with their value for what they want to exchange this for that. So in the example of the activity, barterer number one wanted to trade three ears of corn for five carrots. However, barterer number four wanted three carrots for three ears of corn. And at the end of the barter, Batterer number one said okay to what batterer number four wanted to trade for. So he did not end up with five carrots, but three carrots. So each person has to agree to the exchange of goods or services. So just doing a recap, problem number one, was double coincidence of want. Problem number two, indivisibility of goods. Problem number three was difficulty to store wealth. And problem number four was the rate of exchange to which one would batter. So now let's head into activity number two. Simple multiple choice question, let's go. Barter is best described as A, exchange of goods and services using money. B, exchanging involve the use of notes and coins. Or C, purchase using checks. Or D, trade of goods and services without the use of money. 60 seconds, let's go. Okay, so if your answer was D, you are quite correct. Trade of goods and services without the use of money. And this is a question that is most likely to appear on your multiple choice exam, which is paper one. So please take note of it, all right? So as we continue, we are now transitioning from the bartering system, which had some problems, and we are going to look at what you guys love. Money, yes, money. But before we go into money, from the, we need to go back into our minds and remember what we saw in the video. What can we, what definition, what concepts can we come up with to define the term money? So let's go. So money refers to any commodity that is accepted as payment for goods and services. So remember what we did in the first definition, we looked at the main concepts coming out of the definition. So we are looking at commodity. Commodity, we would look at in the next slide, anything that you can use as a form of money, anything of value that is. Then anything that is accepted as payments for what? Things that are tangible and intangible, which we call goods and services. And this is what we love, right? Yes. Okay, moving forward, we are going to look at what commodities could be, as in types of money. So, number one, notes and coin. We all know this. We all love this. We all use this. And we use this at snack time. We use this to come to and from school. And we utilize it other ways as well. Notes and coins. That's our main type of money. Then, we also utilize this, if not us, our parents directly, credit cards. So we have an example of a credit card right here. And it's a card that is given by a financial institution, by someone who qualifies for that. And there are benefits and there are its disadvantages to having this card. So some advantages may be that you have purchasing power, more purchasing power. It is a card that gives you access to the bank's money, which you have to pay back at your um, point in time. So for example, we can use Monten. Every Monten, you have some interest to pay or you have whatever you used on the card to be paid on that credit card. Whereas on a debit card is where you, uh, it also comes from a financial institution. However, it's using your own money and you could access it at any point in time. It can be obtained from a teller in the bank or it could be obtained through an ATM or ABM machine, all right? Then we have electronic money transfer, which can be done 
money being transferred from your account to somebody else's or you sending money from Western Union or MoneyGram to somebody else in another country or in another part of your country. Then we have telebanking, which is using your phone to do a variety of transactions. You can either call your bank or you can utilize the app on your phone to do so. Lastly, we have e-commerce, which is buying and selling of goods and services online. And many of you may relate to that because you buy your shoes or your book bag online and order it into your parents' skybox and they then go and collect it and you're able to obtain goods that came from outside of Trinidad and Tobago. All right? So these are the different types of money that is used as a commodity to make payments for goods and services that you desire. Next, we are going to look at characteristics of money. So the first characteristic, acceptable. It's accepted anywhere you go. So if you go to the canteen, if you take a transportation to and from school, if you have to pay for classes, it's accepted anywhere. Then you have durable. In terms of durable, it is long lasting. You can wash it in your clothes. Um, football boys, you'll tie it on your string. Uh, you make rings and you play with it in class and so on before you even spend it, write your name and doodle and all those different things. And eventually one day, one of the money that you would have doodled on may come back to you, all right? So it is durable, it could, is very long lasting. It goes to the bank, would change its hands so many times before it is uh, it actually worn out. Three, homogeneous. It just basically um, focuses on one currency. So we have the $100 bill and to see how every $100 bill that you have received or, or you have seen basically looks the same. It has the same logo, same inscription, the same color. However, the person who would have signed it as in the governor may be a difference, or the serial number, that is. But it's basically the same num number, shape, and color. Number four, it's portable, meaning that you can take it anywhere, put it wherever. Um, my grandmother, she likes to push it in her bosom. Some persons push it in their pocket. They have a wallet. It's in their shoe, tie up on a string. So it, you can take it anywhere, put it anywhere to take it. Then we have divisibility, or it's divisible, meaning that it can be broken down into smaller units. So we have a $100 bill. And a $100 bill could give you how many $20 bills? five $20 bills. Okay, so a $100 bill can be broken down into five twenties, so it is divisible. And we could break down a dollar into four 25 cents pieces. And lastly, it's relatively scarce, meaning that not too much money must be out in the public domain at one time. Money has value, and once you have too much money within the public domain, it means that you have something called inflation, which is the rise and fall of prices of, of, of goods and services and so on. So we can't have too much of that, all right? So please remember the characteristics, acceptable, durable, homogeneous, portable, divisible, and scarce. Next, we move on to the four functions of money. So function number one, it acts as a medium of exchange. It means that you exchange goods and services for money. We go into the canteen, give me a pie and a juice day, $7. You give the $7, you collect your pie and your juice and you go on your merry way. Number two, storage of wealth. Your money could be saved today, tomorrow, to be used in the future. You can save your money to buy a car, invest in your education, to buy a house, to go on vacation, anything. Number four, standard of deferred payment. You can, or your parents can, borrow money today 
to buy a car, to buy a house, to invest in your own education and pay for it over time, all right? And the last one is measure of value. Because every item has monetary value attached to it, you're now able to pay for that item based on prices, based on the monetary value. And most of the time, times we look at quality, color, weight, size. So for example, a car and uh, the type of car that you buy. So if we're talking about Lamborghini, Rolls Royce, we know how much money we have to put out for that in comparison to a Nissan B13. Just think about it, all right? So recap, functions, medium of exchange, storage of wealth, standard of deferred payment, and measure of value. So let's go into activity number three. And it says, which of the following is not a function of money? A, medium of exchange, B, indivisibility, C, store of value, and D, medium of exchange. So let's take 30 seconds to get this one right. So if your answer is B, then you are quite correct. Indivisibility means that money cannot be broken down, and we know that money is divisible. $100 bill can be broken down into five $20 pieces. All right? And all the others are actually functions of money. So good job. As we went through money, we looked at what money was. We looked at the characteristics and the functions of money. We are now going to talk about how money overcame the problems of bartering. And money gives a monetary value to every item, every service, every good. So therefore, we no longer need to have double coincidence of want to barter with someone in order to get what we want. We could just pay for it. We no longer need to sit down and listen to someone to come up with an agreement to how much we're going to get for this item. We can just pay the dollar value for that item. Okay? And storage of wealth, we buy whatever we want and we keep it as long as we want to use it however we want. So therefore, money is very important and we should therefore try to understand how important it is to us and the purchasing power that we have when we have a dollar in our hand. And please remember, a dollar today would never be a dollar tomorrow. So lastly, before we go, I just want to run through some terminologies that you need to know in order to start and finish the POB syllabus in order for exams. So these are some words that you're going to hear me say and use throughout these lessons. And you should look them up. Use a POB def dictionary or textbook. All right? So thank you for listening. And I do hope that you, take, you took something away from this class today. And I hope that the objectives were met. Thanks. Mm -hmm.